Hi everyone and welcome to my channel, I'm Irene and today I'm gonna show you some Mackenzie and Child inspired my covers of Dollar Tree items. My first makeover is of this garden bunny. First I'm priming it. I'm using dark grey acrylic primer here. This is optional of course as I'm going to cover the figure with some foregrass, but usually when you make some coating, like covering anything with flocking powder or beads or anything else, if your base has a light color it may show through and you'll have to add extra layer to cover this. The bunny is light in some areas, that's why I decided to prime. You can spray painted black, this will also help cover light areas. After the primer has dried, I'm painting inner parts of the ears black. Then I'm covering the table with some old cloth and covering all parts of the body that I wish to leave without grass coating with masking tape. Here the bottom and the inside of the ears. I'm using spray adhesive, it's easy to work with and is really sticky, so provides excellent coverage. For coverage I bought grass imitation at AliExpress. These are thin green fibers trimmed about 3 mm long. I'll link this material down below. There is a special device called flocker or flocking machine to spray these fibers to attach them vertically over the surface like real grass, but here some smooth coating is quite ok for me. You can also use other types of glue suitable for flocking powder, I'll link possible options down below as well. As you can see, even without any special device, application technique is quite simple. Cover the bunny with glue, sprinkle with grass, then shake it off over a clean sheet of paper. I covered the bunny in three steps, first lying on its side, then from the opposite side and finally while standing upright. Spray adhesive here provides very good stickiness and fibers get into nice and thick layer, but if your glue is not as good, you can always give it a second coat. By the way, these fibers are really a burden. I had a package 30 grams and I spent maybe one third of package for the whole bunny. After the glue has dried, remove the masking tape. I added some contact glue over the ears and sprinkled it with grass to make the edge more neat. Since, as you remember, today's video is about Mackenzie and child inspiration, I'm drawing gold polka dots inside Barney's ears. And finally, I'm tying a checked bow tie around its neck. I'm making it from a checkered ribbon. As you can see, checkered button we are used to at Mackenzie's Creations is just a small accent here. The green fur coating turned out to be very nice looking. You can also decorate any other toys or object for spring decor this way. Dark teddy bears or simply spheres or Easter eggs.
Then I bought some wooden candle holders and I decided to paint them in the Mackenzie style. To begin with, I'm priming the surface as usual. Next, I'm marking the pattern lightly with a pencil. I'm dividing the round base into six parts, setting the length of the radius around the circumference. Then I'm drawing stripes according to the markup and dividing them into checks with horizontal lines. I'm dividing the leg into strips using a ruler. I'm attaching the ruler to the base marking and drawing lines over the leg. And in addition, I'm making markings along the edges of the candle holder. I'm marking the second candle holder the same way, but here I'm making the base striped and the leg checkered. After applying the markings, I'm painting the candle holders white. Over the white color, I'm applying long strokes in a creamy and pale blue colors to make it look more like vintage Mackenzie pattern. And finally, I'm painting black. Best is to use flat brush with a straight cut edge, then checks and stripes can be drawn quickly and accurately. By the way, you can use same technique to paint any DIY or ready-made wooden candle holders. I've seen them made out of wooden pillars, for example. You can paint them same way as these ones and I'll also link where to buy same candle holder bases as mine. If you are new, I want to say a big welcome and would love you to join my community by tapping on the subscribe button as well as the bell to keep up to date with everything I have to show. I'm leaving some of the remaining parts of the candle holders white, some of them I'm painting black and I also decided to add some colored details. First I took two shades, green and blue, but I didn't like the look with green and I repainted the green into gold color and also added some thin gold rims here and there. I really like the result. I think bold black and white patterns are very much in living by blue and gold. You can also add traditional for Mackenzie and Child bright red details rather than blue. 
In the same way you can paint any wooden bases is to eggs look interesting in this technique. And I'm also thinking about painting dishes. I've seen tea pots and glasses at Mackenzie's website. We'll try to recreate these someday using paints for ceramics. A couple of weeks ago I was making an egg house from wooden slats and I'll still have small pieces left that I decided to use and make a small decorative plant. I'm cutting the remnants of the slats into 10 cm long pieces. I'm gluing these pieces together using wood glue. Here I'm making four sides and bottom. I'm using 4 cm wide slats for sides and 5 cm wide slats for the bottom to make it square. After drying, I'm gluing the box from the resulting details. I'm cutting a couple of leftover slats lengthwise into narrow planks, simply cutting with a sharp knife using a ruler. You can also buy some narrow slats and I just used what I had on hand. I'm attaching these narrow planks to the corners of the box. And I'm also making a contour along the top. I'm also gluing four wooden beads at the corners of the box. You can also take any large beads or glass balls. They are going to be painted anyway, so any type of material will do. I'm staining the sides of the planter. Here I'm using oak color wood stain. After the stain has dried, I'm attaching masking tape over the sides. Then I'm priming the edging planks and corner beads using acrylic primer. I'm making markings on the side planks for checkered pattern. Then I'm painting it white and applying strokes of creamy and blue. Everything is like with candle holders. And finally I'm painting checks in black and here we got very nice chest-like posts. I'm also adding some stripes for some nice checks and stripes combinations. And I'm removing masking tape in order not to damage the pattern I cut along the tape edge with a sharp knife before removing the tape. I also decided to add some casting details. I had some small fly silicon molds, so I'm casting some flies out of polymer clay. I'm carefully cutting off all the excess clay with a knife. I wanted to make the flies gold and I decided to experiment here a little with a dry pigment bought not so long ago at Aliexpress. Pigment is a fine powder that can be added to any paint or varnish to obtain the desired shade. I have gold pigment here and I'm applying it with a dry brush over the polymer flies before baking, while the polymer clay is still sticky. The pigment is imprinted into the polymer clay and is holding very well. 
I like that with this method of application the smallest details of the relief remain visible and also no traces of brush. But of course you can also just paint it gold with any paint you like. I just wanted to try this method of applying pigments. I put the finished insects over some aluminium foil and baking according to the instructions and then hot gluing them over the sides of the planter. Finally, I'm covering the planter with protective varnish. I love my new little planter. I put a small rhododendron there. I think some ivy, myrtle or tiny ficus tree would look very good there. You can also make it much bigger and add some metal casting instead of polymer ones or add some furniture handles to its sides. It will look very cool in a rose garden or any classic garden you know with print boxwood and so on. Let me know what you think of the project down below. I want to thank all of you for joining me today. Have a great day. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.